Hello again, guys. This is Stephen Daniels with DUI Undo Consultants. I'm here today in the company studio. Uh, I want to show you another video. This is one of my most favorite videos from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office Central Breath Testing Unit in, in Tampa, Florida. Um, the video we're going to see today was made back in March 8th, on, on March 8th, 2007. And in this video, you're going to see the Florida Department of Law Enforcement um, Department Inspector Don Surrett sitting right here at this table. He's in the process. He's going to do three department inspections. There's an intoxilizer right here on this table. There's one in this cubicle, cubicle number one. Then there's another one in this cubicle, cubicle number two. This little thing you see right here is a floor fan. And uh, that's kind of a funny story. Uh, and it's it's uh, one of their, it's their catch-all excuse for testing failures in this room. And uh, what I mean by that is the machines folks are allowed to tail to fail a testing sequence and your state legislators have let the Florida Department of Law Enforcement propagate rules that allow them to retest if there's a testing failure as long as they put down why it failed and what they did to correct it. Uh, well, first off, the problem is that the state and FDLE wants to proffer any test results, whether it be a breath test or HD inspection or department inspection, as reliable and scientifically accurate. When there is an ambient fail, in other words, the air in the room, there's an ambient failure that the machine supposedly picks up. Um, this is the cure-all. They simply state that they turn this fan on and the room is aired. The ironic part is that this machine here fails uh, on that day. And uh, the fan is facing this way. And the fan is the uh, excuse for allowing the department inspector to continue on testing. Uh, think about this. This is an industrial or commercial grade uh, uh, building. The ceilings are probably 12 feet high here. Uh, this, the uh, floor fan is 18 to 20 feet away from the table. And because he puts down that he aired the room out and turned the fan on, the courts swallow this gullible or the, the, the courts are gullible because they, they believe this bogus excuse. And we really wouldn't know that these excuses that they use are, are, are valid or aren't valid uh, if we didn't have this video. So what you're going to see here today is you're going to see a department inspector. He's going to drink a Diet Coke. This machine here is going to fail. That's right, folks. He drinks the Diet Coke and blows into it, and the machine fails after the department inspector drinks Diet Coke in violation of FD Lee Form 37. Um, basically, folks, Form 37 is the operations procedure for giving someone a breath test that has been arrested for DUI. In that procedure, they are supposed to watch the uh, person that's been arrested for 20 minutes prior to giving them a breath test to make sure they don't drink anything, uh, regurgitate, or vomit. So what you have is the department inspector violating those procedures because he should be following those same procedures before he blows into this machine. He shouldn't drink anything 20 minutes prior to. So um, what I'm going to show you is he's going to get out of the chair. He's going to walk down this hall. He's going to come back with a Diet Coke. He's going to be sipping on it. And then four to five seconds after he takes a drink out of it, he's going to blow in the machine and it fails. So, and I'll slow it down so you can see him doing that. Okay, he should be coming back into the room here shortly. Here he comes. There he is. He's drinking the Diet Coke. I'll reverse it again so you can see it. He takes a sip out of the Diet Coke. He stops drinking it. And now about five seconds later, he's going to blow into this machine. And now the intoxilizer is going to fail after Don Surratt drinks Diet Coke. Watch his arms flail here when, he, when it fails. Here it comes. Damn! Damn it! Let's see that again, Don. Watch him fail. Damn! Damn it! So now he's thinking, oh my god, I shouldn't have been drinking that Diet Coke. He's wondering, did the Diet Coke make the Intoxilizer 8000 fail? Uh, so he doesn't know what to do at this point. He's now got to start thinking. You know, He knows he shouldn't have been drinking the Diet Coke. He's questioning himself, did that machine really pick it up? So he, 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 he starts to get even a little bit more aggravated. You can, you can show his frustration, folks. Because um, right now, at this point, he really doesn't know what to do. If that machine fails a second time, he's got to take it offline and send it for repair. Look how aggravated he gets. He opens these drawers in his cabinet and slams them. Let's see that again. Let him slam those drawers. Like I say, folks, he's a department inspector. If it fails a second test, and he knows he can't blow in the machine since he's been drinking, he puts his, he's in a pickle, he puts his department inspector thinking cap on. What's he going to do? What kind of excuse can he come up with that the courts and the defense attorneys are going to believe? So, he's still thinking. And now, all of a sudden, a light goes off. Oh, what's he do? He goes and gets this Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office employee to come and finish the retest. 
The disturbing point, point of this is, folks, he doesn't document that he has somebody else participate in this. Uh, one, he shouldn't have anyone else participating in the, in the test. He should do it just himself. Um, now watch his head bob. And what he's telling her is keep blowing, same as a breath test operator would tell you if you got arrested and blown in the machine. All right, she's got her mouthpiece in, and now she's going to blow. Watch his head bob. And you can just hear him saying, Keep blowing, 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 keep blowing. Okay. Well, it looks like now that she didn't drink any diet, over had everything to drink with, it machine passed. So now he's going to go on. And, and like I say, folks, the disturbing point is that he didn't document that the Diet Coke was a problem. He put unknown source. And then he didn't document that this young lady helped him. Uh, with the test in violation of the Department of Policy and Procedures. He should have been the only one conducting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this and now I'm going to put my webcam back up so you can see me and I got to apologize. It's going to be a little herky-jerky for a second. So give me a second, folks. Okay, we're back. So there you go, guys. Unless we had this video, <clears throat> that that's the problem that Without a video, you really wouldn't know if the excuses that any agency inspector, or department inspector is using to keep a failing machine online are valid. Um, and, and that brings up a couple good points that I'll get to. <clears throat> but I want to want to stress one thing. It doesn't matter how good a breath, you can have the best breath testing machine there is. But unless you have integrity from the people that are conducting the test, it doesn't matter how good your machine is. So what we have here is we have not only a statewide problem, but a nationwide problem. Um, and this has been going on uh, in Florida for a long, long time. And a lot of defense attorneys don't know about this because there's no video. So how do you prove uh, that the test results are, are fake? Um, back in 2008, when this first started circulating, that they were manipulating the test back in 2007 that started, um, there was a department inspector that FDLA wound up firing him because not only was she deleting test results, but she was telling the agency inspectors underneath her. Uh, to get to the bottom of that, let me back up a little bit and explain what happened. I believe back in 2002 that the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, when they approved or evaluated and approved this machine, I believe that they knew there was a fatal flaw in the design of this machine. And what I mean by that is these machines are allowed to fail a testing sequence one time, and then they're allowed to retest that sequence as long as they put down what they did and what, what, what the failure was and what they did to correct it. <clears throat> There's three levels on a on intoxilizer. There's a breath test operator, and all you do on that is you hit the green start button, wait 20 minutes, swipe your driver's license, and key in your uh, agency number, and tell the person to blow. But when you do an agency inspection, and that person works for that individual police department, they do monthly inspections. Or when you do an FDLE department inspection, and, and that person's responsible for having a section of the state, in this case, Department Inspector Don Surrett oversees the Tampa Clearwater area, a broader area than that, but that's just the area right now that we're in. Um, that's a password protected area. Um, what they didn't realize, they were smart enough to let that uh, loophole be in there, but they weren't smart enough to realize that when they deleted the test, it didn't delete the login. So when FDLE came out and terminated Sander Vega over this deleted test stuff, uh, they came out with a bogus excuse saying this is an isolated incident, she's a rogue employee. Then and there I decided to try to find a law enforcement agency to videotape and lo and behold in my backyard Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office had a 24-hour surveillance. So at my own cost and at great expense, I started requiring, doing public records requests and, and acquiring uh, thousands of hours of videos. And when I would request these videos, these videos, I would get all 24 hours because I wanted to know, not only know what was happening during the test, but what was happening before and after these tests. How did I determine that they were falsifying these testing reports? Basically, what I did was I went to the uh, FDLE records and I found the test that failed. Then I looked for multiple logins. Once I seen there were 10, 15 logins and I could only account for one or two of those logins, I then requested that video. Once I confirmed that the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office HC inspector at that time, Beverly Gray, was turning the machines off, I then took my investigation to the other uh, extreme. And that was, this was happening back in 2007. When the investigation with Sandy Vega came out in, in 2008 and FDLA announced this, um, you know it spread like wildfire. Don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore. So now what do they do? They started coming up with fake excuses. And we wouldn't have this information. You wouldn't know about it if I didn't request all these videos and start putting them online and, and, and finding this stuff out. Um, 
But after the VAG incident, they started coming up with uh, these fake excuses. And, and then I took my investigation the other way. I, I basically went to an inspection. They had a fit testing failure and, I, and one, one login. And you would look at that normally and say, okay, it failed and she did something right or he did something right and they went on and retested. But when I got those videos, it was even more disturbing because not only did I, uh, I see that they were turning the machine off and deleting them, now I found that they were putting these fake excuses down. I'm going to show you those videos. I'll post a couple of them later on. But I've got HC Inspector Beverly Gray back in uh, June 18th, I believe, was 2008. Um, she was actually put down. The machine had a control outside of tolerance failure. Um, like on an 08 solution, for instance. These machines, they allow them a margin of error to fail. And when they put an 08 alcohol solution, alcohol reference solution in a simulator, it's like a big peanut butter jar, and they hook it up to the intoxilizer, and it pumps air through there. And it's supposed to read that solution, that uh, that vapor from that solution, at a 0.075 to 0.85. If it reads it outside of it, then it says control outside of tolerance you want to retest. Again, you're allowed to retest as long as you put down what you did, why the machine failed, what you did correct it. Well, Beverly Gray types in, she replaced an O-ring. And clearly on the video, her hands never leave the keyboard, never touch the simulator, never touch the intoxilizer. What's more alarming is I then uh, got the video for the very next day on a different machine, and she used the same excuse on, on a different machine the very next day. Um, I have went to Florida Department of Law Enforcement um, and tried to get something done as far as some charges against Beverly Gray. They won't do anything. They said everything was referred to Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, um, and they can't investigate her because she works for another law enforcement agency. Well, I believe that's wrong because uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement has administrative uh, complaints, Section 502, stating that if any ATP member, or member and that would be a department inspector, or the uh, program manager, Ms. Laura Barfield, finds out that an ATP permit holder, which would be Beverly Gray, Hillsborough County, violates any requirements that permit. They're supposed to inform, inform the program manager, and then she's supposed to appoint a member to investigate. So basically, FDLE stuck their head in the sand and pushed it off to the sheriff's office. Um, I then contacted the sheriff's office and asked them if they were going to do something about it. I got a letter back from their chief general counsel, Tony Pelosi, and basically he, uh, he let me know in this letter that... Um, they got together with representatives at FDLE and thoroughly reviewed their written policy procedures. If I had anything other than the videos, please contact them. So I don't know how they could decide that there was any type of criminal misconduct, nor would they know what to look for since FDLE designed the program. Um, so again, this, this video is clearly used uh, as a presentation to show you that we got some serious problems with the alcohol testing program, not only in the Florida, but in the state. And I'm calling for nationwide mandatory videotaping of all subject breath tests and all agency inspections. I'm also calling for nationwide mandatory machine specific testing. So, and what I mean by that is any, any state that uses this machine should have to do the same testing. Uh, that'll accomplish two things. It'll give us a better baseline of the machine's true performance capabilities and it will also uh, expose a lot more problems the machine has because uh, there's several videos I've already posted that shows you some of the problems where they're uh, showing that the machine is not ethyl alcohol specific nor does it have a uh, the alcohol slope detector has some serious problems as far as detecting mouth alcohol or true breath alcohol but uh, once again guys this is Stephen Daniels with uh, DUI New Consultants if this video doesn't scare the hell out of you I don't know what does uh, to show you not to drink and drive um, again as I said before um, you can have the best machine in the world, but unless you have the integrity of the people testing it, then you've got some serious problems. And um, I'm not saying that all the law enforcement are bad people. I'm just saying that there's a select few people that do what this department inspector has done and do what uh, um, uh, the HC inspector has done, and that really tarnishes that shiny badge. So once again, any defense attorneys out there that have a case coming up for your client that's going to trial, that the state's going to present Don Surratt as a... Uh, state's witness, please contact me. Uh, I have plenty of videos that would go, would show or or um, expose um, Don Surrett and would put serious doubt into his truth or veracity in his testimony. And the videos also show or would uh, be conclusive evidence, I believe, in my opinion, again, that any of his excuses uh, that he uses to allow these machines to stay online uh, should be questioned and, and uh uh, our bogus excuses are less than truthful. Once again, Stephen Daniels from DUI and Do Consultants. And stay tuned for some videos about Beverly Gray. Uh, I'm going to continue posting these videos from Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Thanks, guys.